Hi, I'm Dr Gary Palmer from Sports Test and I want to talk to you this time about planning your training phases. The key thing in planning your training phases is to identify your goals and aims. And once you have an idea of what your long-term goal is, this really should be quite easy. We'll talk about goals and aims and how to set them and how useful they are at a different phase. But for now, what I want you to think about is working towards a long-term goal how do I plan my training phases? I use a very simple concept of looking at a training pyramid where the top of the pyramid is the goal event that we're looking to work towards. The peak of the pyramid or the final phase of your training is about speed and power training and as we can see here the left of this we're looking at intensity and specificity so as we get towards the goal event your training will become far more intense and it will become very very specific to the discipline that you're looking to do. The opposite side of that we're looking at the training duration so in the speed and the power phase the duration of the sessions will be very short and the total volume of the training will be quite light. The base of the pyramid is formed by your base and your foundation phase. Again as you can see during this phase the intensity of the training should be very low the training shouldn't be as specific or it doesn't need to be as specific to the sport that you're doing. It's about general cardiovascular base building, about making sure that you have the mechanics in place and your body can cope with the training that you're going to do and the fitness that you're going to build. During this phase, the sessions are much longer in duration and the total volume of the training to build your cardiovascular base should be considerably more. As we move through from base and foundation training, through to speed and power training, I go through a phase which I call transitional training. And this is getting the body ready for race pace work, ready for race pace intensities. Now again, if we look at each of the phases in turn, working back from the goal event, the final phase of the training, the speed and the power work, whilst this is specific to the event that you're doing, generally, this would be somewhere between four and six weeks of training. Now clearly for some athletes they don't actually need any speed on power work so this phase can be withdrawn for those sort of athletes. So for instance someone that's doing an ultra endurance race, maybe a marathon runner or an ultra distance runner or an all-dax rider. They don't need to have that speed, that power, that burst. It can be useful but it's certainly not vital. So this phase generally as I said would be four to six weeks. The base phase at the opposite end of that scale takes time to build but once it's built can provide a brilliant foundation to the athlete. This phase for my athletes would be anywhere between three and nine months of training depending on their background, depending on what they're doing on an annual basis and again depending on the events they were looking to undertake. Moving from the base to the speed and power again we're looking at the transitional phase training. This is about threshold development, lactate tolerance, being able to work at race pace or being able to climb for a duration. Normally this training phase again depending on the event and all of this is event specific would be somewhere between 6 and 12 weeks. So quite easily knowing your goal event you can work backwards. If I'm looking at 4 to 6 weeks worth of speed and power work, if I'm looking at 6 to 12 weeks of threshold, threshold transitional training if I'm looking at three to nine months worth of base training, what training phase should I be in at the moment? High intensity, low duration, low volume, the speed and power, moderate intensity, moderate duration, moderate volume for your transitional work, low intensity, high volume, high duration for your base and foundation training. Put these simple principles together, you will ensure you get to your goal event in peak fitness. Now clearly we can use these and we can use the results of your fitness test at Sports Test to make your training far more specific and to make sure you maximise your results. Thanks for listening, I hope you found this useful.